Hello and welcome to the first lecture in Systematics, Bio 110. So today, we're going to look at the science of systematics and taxonomy. Now, in written literature, it is said that the beginning of biology in general was from how the Greeks tried to logically apply order in the world they lived in. So their solution was classification. Okay, let's categorize. They thought that order could be demonstrated by categorizing life. So this is called the Aristotelian legacy. Okay, but for us indigenous peoples, naming is a way to hold history and belongingness. Okay, indigenous communities have names for plants, animals, even landforms and water bod bodies of water because they are not just a part of their environment, but also a form, but also form part of their identities. Okay, of our identities. Why? Because our home, their home, indigenous peoples, their home is not just a place, okay? It's a lifeline. It's where they get food. It's um, being a part of nature. Their names and the names they give animals, plants, even bodies of water and landforms, this is their way, our way of expressing inclusion and respecting the right to belong. So... Where biology has its beginnings in confusion and this seemingly lack of order, indigenous names are grounded in identity and belonging. Okay? Now, a large part of our discussions will be influenced by the Western scientific knowledge system. But if you are interested with other existing knowledge systems like indigenous knowledge systems, there is an article written by Len Gilman and Shane Wright entitled Restoring Indigenous Names in Taxonomy. And I can link um, the published article, the link to the published article uh, in the description. The, so this article was just published last year in the journal Nature. Okay, it's open access. I will link it in the description below. Okay, so again, so what then is taxonomy, okay? So, recorded literature, at least according to Ernst Mayer, okay, M-A-Y-R, taxonomy began as an applied science. Why was it applied? Because it was for medicine, okay, and survival. So, either you eat the right food or you die, right? So, it became this technique of identification. It was a te technique because you had kailangan mo siyang hasain as well, okay? And as the century progressed, marami nang fields na nagdevelop, syempre. So, this taxonomy had to cater to the growth and development also of different fields in science, okay? So, now, we will refer taxonomy as at least here in this class, of course, strictly as describing, naming, and classifying organisms. Again, that is describing, naming, and classifying organisms. Okay? So, kung ganun, ano naman ang mga ginagawa ng ating mga taxonomists? Okay? So, if you are a taxonomist, first, ayan, so, meron tayo ditong backpack. Okay, bakit backpack? Because you have to discover, describe, name, and classify. Okay, so taxonomists, they have to devise ways in order to be able to describe, name, and classify. So, of course, you do this by studying and comparing both living and extinct species. And what better way to do that than explore, okay? Kaya siya backpack. Ang napili kong icon. Yeah. The second one is a camera. Why? Because 
taxonomists have to document the living world. Okay? So, descriptions should be accompanied by illustrations. Kaya, tayo, na mga biologists, medyo nagmi-major din tayo in fine arts kasi kailangan nating mag-drawing. Ayan, so, naaalala ko talaga sa botany classes ko noon, grabe, kailangan talaga siyang i-drawing. This is also to engage our senses para din naiintindihan natin at na-memorize natin yung mga parts. Okay? So, ayan, so, uh, para mas naiintindihan at nakikita ka agad din ng mga nagbabasa ang mga describe ng mga taxonomists. So, it has to be with illustrations. Very important yung illustration. Para din naiintindihan nila, ah, ito pala yung describe niyang distinguishing characteristics. Okay? Take note of the word distinguishing. Okay? So, kailangan, ito yung nag-iiba sa kanya, nagsiseparate sa kanya from the rest. Okay? So, later on, you will read na Especially with Linnaeus, okay, so he, fo he focused uh, looking at reproductive organs in plants as main sources of these distinguishing characteristics, okay, to, of course, easily classify and identify plants, okay. So his reasons for this is largely religious, of course, but it eventually proved useful, okay, as um, history tells us. Okay, so the third is a check mark because taxonomists, we taxonomists, have to make sure that knowledge and understanding of biodiversity is organized and can be accessed. Okay, syempre, all in all, yung work mo kailangan accessible sa iba. Okay, so accessible repositories containing data that can be easily understood. Okay, hindi lang siya dapat accessible, dapat agad-agad mo din siyang naiintindihan. Okay? So, this is one of the most important things in science. Good communication. This ensures, of course, that science lives on. Diba? Kasi naipapasa-pasa yung information from generation to generation. So, documentation as well provides a a means, okay, provides means for counter-checking yung data na nakalap natin, okay? It also provides means to verify this data dahil yun nga ang grounds ng science, di ba? Uncertainty drives science forward and so research is there. If we all have the answers na, hindi na natin kailangan ng verification, di ba? Ng more experimentation. So, to be able to go through that scientific method to be able to be um, verifiable ayan, may ganun bang word ayan, to be counter-checked ayan, so it is necessary for us to document it properly, okay so syempre, di ba makikita dyan, may nakahanap na kaya ng parehong species tulad nung nakuha mo, saan kaya so ano kayang klaseng environment na meron yung nahanap na species na halos katulad niya, di ba? Sa temperate ba? Sa tropical ba yan? Grassland? Pine forest? So, ano yung elevation? Ayan, so dapat lahat yan, dinodocument mo para sa buong scientific community na ma-verify yung mga data na nakuha mo. So, when you have this collection of information about one species, you then begin, begin to have a view of their Behavior of its population behavior and even its speciation, kung paano siya dumami, kung paano siya nag-diversify. Okay? So, yun yung mga ginagawa ng mga taxonomists. Sobrang, uh, actually, sobrang dami nilang na contribute sa uh, paglaganap ng zoology and botany fields, okay, in biology. Ayan. Okay. Okay. So now, what is systematics, naman? Ba? So for systematics, this is the study. It refers to the study of organic diversity. Organic diversity. Okay. The kinds and diversity of organisms. Not just that, but also the relationships among them. 
okay so it just it doesn't just look at diversity but it also looks at diversity with evolution in mind okay so ibig sabihin sa systematic sinitignan natin ang diversity bilang produkto ng evolution okay so kung ikukumpara natin sa ibang fields of science like chemistry Di ba sa chemistry, alam na natin lahat ng mga elemento dyan. Meron na tayong periodic table of elements, di ba? May mga ilan-ilan na lang na nadadagdag over time or naiiba. Pero, sa biology, lalo na sa systematics, we still do not know how much there is on Earth, how much life there is on Earth. Di ba? So, kung titignan natin, if I may compare it, Systematics in this way ay parang Facebook ng buhay. Diba? Yung mga relationships ng bawat species, yung mga uh, nanay, lola, tita, lahat, yung location pati, diba? yung photo documentation, bawat angulo. Diba? So, ganun yung systematics na nakikita ko in a simpler way. Okay? It's like this database. It's like Facebook na na-update siya paulit-ulit. Okay? So, in general, it kind of works like this database for biology. At kailangan-kailangan natin to to proceed, to move forward. Okay? Not just sa species approach, pero at an ecosystem approach. Kasi, di ba, kailangan natin malaman yung biotic and abiotic factors. And yung, ab- yung biotic factors natin, yung living species natin, wala pa tayong complete inventory of that. Okay? Kaya ang systematics, mahalagang-mahalaga yung role niya sa biology. In fact, tinatawag pa siyang cornerstone. Okay? Kasi it shows how organisms are integrated at different levels, not just at the species level. Okay? So from species to population. From the past to the present. Okay? Yon. So here... Diba? Ayon kay Myers, the study of the nature and origin of the natural populations of living organisms, again, both present and past. Another one is, it is the production of cladograms that link taxa through their observed variation. Okay? So, all in all, ang ating um, systematics ay magmumukhang ganito, parang pie chart. Okay? So, ganyan. Ang ah, ganito. Ay, ganyan. <laughs> A few moments later. So, magmumukha siyang ganito. Okay. So, ang systematics now ay composed of your taxonomy, so pinakataas, study of the process of evolution, and study of phylogeny. So, Again, sa taxonomy, titignan natin yung individuals as a taxon. Okay? And then, we put them now in a category. Okay? And we give them names. Okay? So, ito yung mga activities na associate, associated with classification ngayon. And then, of course, the study of the process of evolution, kailangan na kailangan yan. Isa din siyang component ng systematics. Okay? So, we look at uh, the processes in nature that caused, okay, that may have caused the variability, okay? So, yan. And lastly, phylogeny, okay? So, ito naman na yung divergence ng different groups, yung speciation nila, okay? Uh, this involves their time, the place, okay? San sila napunta, ayan. So, yung kanilang dispersal, okay? So, yun naman yung study of phylogeny. And all these, taxonomy, evolution, uh, and phylogeny, they are all needed in the study of, of systematics. So, not only that, what then do uh, biosystematists do? Okay, so let's go back to yan, our lecture. Okay. So, ano bang ginagawa ng ating mga biosystematists? So, first of all, okay, in biology, yan, medyo konting ano muna tayo, uh, intro. So, in biology, we usually have two sides of the coin, okay, of uh, the biological coin, the study of biology. 
So at one side, okay, these are the seemingly two um, fields under biology. So at one side, we have the, scien the sciences that help us understand how life functions, okay, or the functional part. So what are the biological or organismal processes uh, involved that carry out life, okay? So what carries out survival at a molecular level, okay? So nandiyan na yung ating biochemistry, physics, kaya napakadami nating uh, subjects na inaaral, okay? So dito siya pumapasok, cell bio, Ayan. So, on the other hand naman, okay, so we also have those that look at biological integration. So, kung kanina, uh, nandiyan ang biochem, ang physics, to somehow explain photosynthesis, biochemical pathways in plants, animals, microbes, fish oil, ayan. On the other side of the coin, we also have those that look at a bigger perspective, yung biological integration, yung interaction na ng mga species. Okay? So, here, we look at population analysis, life cycles, phylogeny, ontogeny. Yan, all those terms, malalaman nyo din as you progress in your course. Okay? So, you, as a systematist, you have to think also about adaptation. Okay, the adaptation of populations and their dispersal. So it is our problem now how we're going to explain diversity. The differences in flora and fauna in different climates and habitats in different elevations. Okay, so first, laptop. Bakit? Kasi we seek to ensure that the classification of organisms is founded on evolutionary relationships. Laptop kasi softwares. Okay, so j let's just keep that in mind. Laptop kasi softwares. Softwares na yung mga gamit natin for that. Okay? May mga repositories na on genetic sequences that can characterize or help us characterize one species from the other. Okay? We let artificial uh, intelligence do its thing, okay? So, syempre, noon, mas mahirap. Okay? Searching meant going to museum, museums kasi um, dun, dun nila ini-store yung mga ginamit nilang uh, herbal medicine dati. Ganyan. So, perusing, it also involves perusing old manuscripts, di ba? Yung mga written by uh, yung mga mga naunang taxonomists. Ayan. We also look at old illustrations. We visit herbaria. Ayan. And all those are still uh, done up to this day. Okay? Don't get me wrong. So, they're still done up to this day. Only that, mas nagiging um, madali na rin dahil sa genetic sequence banks. Okay? Pangalawa, we have the study of the big picture, kaya siya camera, ulit, okay? So, we look at functional versus biological science, like I explained kanina, okay? And then third, we allow predictions about the properties and traits of organisms, okay? Predictions. We have to remember na, again, uncertainty is the engine of science, okay? So, yung mga to, we try to supplement our predictions with uh, evolutionary science, climate science, ayan, okay? But of course, these are still predictions until proven, okay? So, ayan, okay? Okay, now, how does taxonomy and systematics help, okay, the real world, okay? So first, it helps in feeding the world. Why? Kasi, when we are able to identify the different, the taxonomy of pests and pathogens, diba, in agricultural science especially, we also are able to identify the causes of crop decline, okay? Bakit kaya namamatay yung crops, okay? And when we know the problem, we can immediately uh, discover, develop 
biological control agents for them. Okay? And taxonomy and systematics in agriculture will also lead researchers to documenting wild relatives of crop plants and animals. Why is this so important? Diba? So, for instance, um, in, in uh, potato uh, produce, ayan, nagkaroon ng mga fungi. Okay? Maraming mga fungi na nakakakil dun sa usual na ginagamit for commercial potato. Okay? So, ang ginawa ng mga scientists ngayon, naghanap sila ng wild varieties uh, from South America, I think. And this, uh, these wild varieties of potato, kinuha na nila ng genetic sequence. Okay? So, GMOs or genetically modified organisms. Nilagay nila sa commercially uh, produced potato and talagang drastically, drastically nag-improve yung quality ng crop. So, kung naon, uh, up to 12 times daw per year, yung kanilang pag-spray uh, ng fungicides, ngayon hindi na. Dahil nga dun, sa nahanap nilang wild varieties. Okay? So, these wild, wild relatives may have genes that could be used to improve crop yields okay, for disease resistance. And when you have these more resistant and more resilient varieties, mas naiiwasan yung crop decline, yung pagbaba ng supply ng ating pagkain. And therefore, we can feed the world. Okay? Pangalawa, improving human health. Okay? So, isa ito sa mga projects na kinabilangan ko noon as a research associate, uh, ang tawag dun sa DUST project ay uh, Tuklas Lunas. So, essentially, we try to look at um, fungi from the soil and on plants that can help uh, us build resistance to disease-causing organisms. Okay? So, just like uh, the pandemic right now, diba? so many disease-causing organisms like the coronavirus have not yet been named or even studied. Okay? So, taxonomy and systematics are very important here. Kasi, uh, especially in the field of microbiology, virology, parasitology, ayan. So, we are able now to identify species that may be different from the rest. Okay? We are able to look into its behavior, its characteristics, and then maybe we can say, oh no, this hasn't uh, been described before. So, we look at its behavior. We test it. Ayan. So, we conduct tests. Ayan. How it will affect humans. And then, this way, it will also lead us to better prepare ourselves. Okay? Through vaccines, through the drug discovery that can combat these potential pathogens. Okay? So, nowadays, uh, ecologists and farmers of human microbiome are now carefully manipulating our internal, our internal biodiversity. Okay, like our gut microbiota. So, di ba? Through probiotics. Ayan. So, meron ng dairy, na um, yogurt drinks, meron ding plant-based. Ayan. So, to keep us more healthy and even to cure diseases. Okay, so systematics and taxonomy plays an important role even here. Ayan. So, third, ayan, third is discovering the drugs of the future. Diba? It began, uh, it began, botany began with medical use. Okay? So, 50%, it is said that 50% of all pharmaceutical compounds registered for use in the USA are derived from or were originally discovered in living organisms. Okay? So, story time, diba? Imagine in Victorian London, okay? Victorian era London. So, we have this guy named Alexander Fleming and pagkauwi niya, nakita niya na oh no, yung petri plate niya na iwan niyang nakatiwangwang. Yung petri plate na to, it contained Staphylococcus culture. And when he looked at it, lagot na contaminate yung plate na yon 
So may nakapasok na ibang uh, organism and that's a fungi. Pero teka lang, bakit mukhang nakakounter nung fungi na to yung Staphylococcus? Paano niya nasabi? Kasi kung saan nag-grow ang ating uh, penicillium na fungi, hindi naman nakaka-grow doon yung Staphylococcus. Okay, so may certain interaction na nagaganap. And dahil doon, he isolated this fungi, grew, grew, grew this fungi in pure culture, and tested it. And now we have what we call penicillin, which is an antibiotic. Okay? So, that's just one example, and there's so many other more, okay? The fourth is enabling industrial innovation, okay? Through taxonomy, through systematics, we are able to look at potential organisms, okay? That not only produce medicines, fuels, organic chemicals, but can also improve the quality of products, okay? Say for instance, yung grape juice, di ba? They saw na with bacteria, what happens? It becomes wine, okay? So, dahil... Um, Sa yeast, in bread, okay? Dahil sa bacteria, may yogurt, okay? So, at dahil malilit silang organisms, madali silang dumami, okay? At marami, uh, madali din silang paramihin. So, nakakapag-supply, okay? Nakakapag-supply para matugunan yung demand para sa mga produktong ito, Okay? Yan. And lastly, we have enabling sustainability. Okay, so now our most uh, relevant sources of data for climate science is on how organisms of the past um, reacted to environmental changes. Diba? So what happens in climate science is that it uses both the present data, compares it to the past data, and then extrapolates it using models to create predictions of the future. Okay? So, if we do not have enough inventory of these organisms in the past and in the present, will we be able to analyze well? Will we be able to come up with enough probabilities to make sound predictions of the future? Of course not, diba? Definitely not. Because uh, in looking at earth systems, we do not only, we cannot only be partial to our species. Kailangan natin i-incorporate yung mga different living organisms kasi we interact with them as well. Okay? We need to look at it as a system. And how the components of this system is threatened, okay? by the negative effects of our industrial revolution. So we have air pollution, land pollution, water pollution, nuclear waste, uh, explosive um, materials in the land and sea, exploitive industries as well. Yeah, and so we have to remember, up to this day, okay, I just have to reiterate this, up to this day, we still do not know how much life there is on Earth. And so, more and more, mas relevant ang mga taxonomists, ang mga ang roles na piniplay ng ating taxonomists, ng ating systematists. Yan. So, oo, we are losing more species than we actually know due to the lack of data. Okay? So, yan. Now, we are going to look at how Systematics can support other fields of biological science. Okay? So in ecology, taxonomy and systematics can support it by ensuring that species and other taxa are scientifically robust, well characterized, and can be accurately identified. Ayan. Another is in genetics. Okay? This is by providing evolutionary and taxonomic framework that allows an understanding of genetic diversity and evolution. Okay? 
So, titignan natin dyan, again, yung mga wild species, not just the commercialized ones. Another is in geology. Okay? So, by characterizing and documenting the fossils that form the basis of much of stratigraphy and hence are key to mining and oil gas exploration. Okay? So, ayan, yung different levels, stratification of the earth, of the soil. Okay? And documenting these. Ayan. So, dun pumapasok ang taxonomy at systematics. So, di ba, sobrang dami niyang applications. Not only that, it also helps in oceanography. Okay? So, this is through discovering and documenting the organisms. Okay? Sobrang dami pang hindi na-explore. Okay? Many of them microscopic and poorly studied. And this underpins and drive ocean productivity. Malilit man sila, microscopic man sila, pero they drive okay, ocean productivity. Marami silang roles na piniplay sa processes na nangyayari sa ating mga oceans. And they need documentation. Another is through agricultural science. So taxonomy and systematics support this field of science by characterizing pests, diseases, beneficial organisms, and the wild relatives of crop plants. Ayan. So, medyo paulit-ulit natin din itong nagiging example kanina. Okay? In medicine, it enables deeper, more accurate knowledge of the microbiome. Okay? Again, pathogens, probiotics, katulad ng ating inexplain kanina. The more we understand about zoonosis, plant pathogens, etc., the more we can also prepare ourselves for potential pathogens. Okay. And then, we also have other, other more fields of science. Okay. Okay. We also have earth science. Ayan. So, sa earth science naman, through studying uh, systematics and taxonomy, we support earth science as a field by enabling documentation of biogeochemical cycles that can help stabilize and drive the earth system. Okay, because we have to remember that systematics also deals with how uh, these organisms diversified, okay, speciation ng organisms na to. And more likely, we have to incorporate there the biogeochemical cycles. Okay? Another is climate science. Okay, so by enabling, we support as systematists, as taxonomists, we support climate science by enabling past, uh, current, future, future climate change, okay, to be tracked. Okay, so again, we have to incorporate that, di ba? Kasi we have to look at the diversity of organisms from the past to the present. Okay, so we look at the past, current, and future climate change through understanding uh, the effects on species and ecological communities. Okay? So, yun naman yung help na naibibigay ng systematics and taxonomy sa climate science. Okay? Another is environmental science. So, medyo group group ko na yung mga magkakaparehong fields. So, in in environmental science, it is also through discriminating naman species and supporting an understanding of life histories, okay? And management of natural resources and species stocks, okay? So, inventory, okay? We look at inventory. And finally, conservation science, okay? So, this is... Uh, supported by systematics and taxonomy by providing authoritative species names that underpin conservation planning and legislation. Dahil paano ka naman, um, paano mo makoconserve yung species na to kung hindi mo alam yung behavior niya, 
kung paano siya uh, nagre-react sa certain changes. Okay? Not only that, but the system as a whole. So, paano ka magkakonserve, let's say, a uh, marine protected area. You're planning to set up a marine protected area, but you do not have the inventory of the species that are there. Yung mga fishes, yung mga mangroves dyan, meron ba? May seagrasses ba? Anong types ng corals ang meron dyan? So, all of these we have to... Um, incorporate or grasp in order to make sound decisions, sound plans for that marine protected area. Okay? So, see how important it is to identify and to classify. Okay? Ayan. So, let's look naman on the history, okay, of uh, taxonomy and systematics. Yan. Okay. Yan. So, in the history of science and tax taxonomy, we can see that first, of course, um, again, let's reiterate, according to Ernst Mayer, taxonomy began again as an applied science. So, it is usually for medicine, and survival, of course, di ba? You eat or you die, okay? So, yun lang, okay? And this is seen um, in the profession of those who were practicing taxonomy at that time. Okay, Linnaeus was actually a phys physician, okay? He was a physician. And then, zoology, on the other hand, it arose naman to uh, study human anatomy and physiology. Medical ulit, yung application, di ba? So, Dati, in the 16th century, tabu pa na mag-open at mag-study ng human. Okay? Kasi nga, uh, it was considered sacred, di ba? Yung mga patay, they were considered sacred. Yan. So, while botany was used to study medicinal herbs, ganyan, dito naman sa zoology, human anatomy, and physiology naman. Okay? So, di ba? Lakas maka-pharmacy. Pharmacists. Yung taxonomists dati. Okay? So, when they became separate sciences, ayan, noong 18th and 19th uh, century, lalo silang uh, nag-diverge as separate sciences, they still wanted to look at um, the diversity of life, okay? To bring order at the di in the diversity of life. So, lalo pang naging extensive ang kanilang pagkakalap ng informasyon. Okay? Lalo na, Nung Renaissance, okay? Nung, nung nagkaroon tayo ng expeditions, nung pwede nang magbukas ng patay para pag-aralan. So, zoologists and botanists were at par. So, same level sila in trying their best to name and identify organisms. At sa ganitong proseso, di ba, you begin to compare these organisms. Okay? So, in the 19th century, dito na nagkaroon ng theory of evolution. You, a guy fell into the rabbit hole of questions, di ba? How did these differences come about? Ayan. At this is spurred, okay, the origin of species, okay, nagawa ni Darwin. Ayan. So, the theory of evolution was actually due to those studying diversity at that time, di ba? So, very important pala yung role ng taxonomists and systematists because they asked these questions okay that led us to the theory of evolution okay so the origin of species was written because of the insufficiency of accepted concepts at the time okay uh, it it was insufficient th those concepts at the time that were used to explain what was happening why they were different were not enough Okay, so now uh, they used these concepts, these evolutionary concepts were began, uh, were used now to explain and support why they made these classification schemes. Okay, bakit sila nag-classify in this way? Okay, so dahil dito, dahil sa tingin ko ganito yung pagkakaklasify, dahil ganito yung uh, pagkaka-explain, okay? yung gagamitin nila ngayon, yung uh, theory of evolution, to 
uh, justify and support their claims. Yan. So, yun yung naging, well, general history ng ating systematics and taxonomy. Now, dahil doon sa introduction ng theory of evolution, lalong na napaigting ang systematics. Okay? Yung cladograms, phylogeny. And now, systematics, uh, umangat siya lalo rather than taxonomy. Okay? Medyo naitsipwera ng konting taxonomy kasi napunta na lang siya sa museums. Na-assign na lang yung study of taxonomy in museums for filing, di ba? Now, systematics was also, dahil dun sa excitement nila tungkol sa theory of evolution and how and making or drawing this tree of life, ganyan. So, talagang nag-boom ang systematics. And this was then introduced in universities for studying. Okay? So, yun yung nangyari. Ayan. Now, let us, as a whole, let's try to differentiate now taxonomy and systematics. So, again, taxonomy will refer here in this class, to the classification of organisms. While systematics, this will refer not just to the, the classification of organisms, but also for the de determination of evolutionary relationships of organisms. Okay? Taxonomy now then becomes a branch of systematics. Okay? Because systematics not only looks at the organisms, but also studies the relationship among them. Okay? Taxonomy is involved in classification and naming. Okay? While systematics, it also involves cladistics. In addition to classification and naming, it involves cladistics and phylogenetics. Okay? So, taxonomy does not just deal, uh, does not deal with the evolutionary history of organisms. Well, systematics does, okay? And lastly, okay, both uh, this, is, uh, this taxonomy can change with further studies, okay? Of course, marami kang ma-didiscubre pa na magkakaiba yung uh, pagkakaklassify pala nila, okay? Through molecular means, ayan. So, this can change in taxonomy. Minsan, di ba, uh, yung certain na individual name this way, iba pala yung naming niya, iba pala yung genus niya after further studies. But in systematics, it should not change with further studies. Okay? Kasi, ang involved na dyan ay yung phylogeny or yung uh, study of evolutionary relationships. Okay? Yan. So, that is the whole of our lecture and these are the references. The contents of this lecture uh, was developed by uh, the different professors in biology, Professor Meiji Bagang Bagangao, Professor Dane Soriano, and Professor Patrick Penales. So all of them developed the contents of this uh, lecture and uh, bahala lang kami na mag-customize or mag-personalize. Yan. So, thank you so much for listening to the first lecture in systematics and uh, in systematics in Bio 110. And I will be seeing you again for the next lecture in Bio 110 systematics. Bye!